research concepts really kind of like linked to the WP name, the idea that it's work in progress, and that they're constantly in research, um, staying alert, trying to figure out what's new and what are the new ideas and the new brands around the world. I'm Samuel Trotman. I'm a trend consultant and content creator. I run a platform called Samatari, which kind of sits as a research platform in the intersection of fashion, art, and pop culture. So if anyone didn't know WP, I'd say they're an Italian company that focuses on distribution and the building of iconic heritage brands. Over the past 40 years, they've really kind of like focused on functionality um, over trends. Um, and really building a wardrobe that's built around lifestyle. I mean, if you look back to the 80s, um, especially in Italian fashion and youth culture that was sort of happening at that time, they were really kind of like chiming um, with the subcultures and the way young people were dressing. And the way that Christina and Giuseppe, how they were kind of building the brand was around this new kind of approach to dressing and mixing brands that traditionally wouldn't go together. So they really kind of like pioneered that concept. The foundation for the brand was really laid in the 1980s when they discovered brands like Paraboot, Woolrich, Barber and Vans. And they were really kind of like true timeless icons that they were kind of pioneering at the time. 1985 was when WP opened their first store in Bologna and it was really kind of like a revolutionary concept at that time. Um, because all of the brands that they were sort of scoping out from around the world, they were bringing them together in one place. And for a lot of Italian and European consumers at that time, they'd never even heard of these brands let alone having them all mixed together in this unique way. Um, and I think it, what was really impressive as well was that it wasn't really about products, but about selling a lifestyle, which was a really like new concept at the time. And then in the later part of the 1980s, they started introducing further brands like Filson and BD Baggies. So during the 1990s, we had an introduction of a lot more kind of American brands coming through. We had the American blank t-shirts from Hanes, we had the sort of the military wear and uniforms coming through from Speedwalk. And then also from Australia, they started importing the footwear as well, the workwear boots from Blumstone. What's really interesting as well in sort of like the 90s is when they first started introducing their catalogues. And this was a way to kind of like archive all of the photo shoots and campaigns uh, that they were doing sort of during the 1980s. And this was like a really revolutionary concept as well because not a lot of brands were really kind of like looking back in their archive and cataloging it in this way. During the 2000s, the brand started to look further afield at that point as well, and especially in the corners over in Japan, where they started bringing in brands like Beams, uh, Nanamica, and Engineered Garments. One of the newest additions to WP portfolio was in 2012 when they acquired uh, Barracuda, so the British outerwear brand. Um, and that was really an interesting move for the brand, especially since it's got such an amazing heritage in terms of its place in sort of celebrity culture um, and subcultures um, from around the UK. So one of the reasons WP has done so well is because of the research that they put in. Obviously they spend so much time and they're dedicated traveling around the world and finding all of these undiscovered brands and bringing them back to one place. And they're all kind of built on this idea of tradition, like super interesting products and that are really built for kind of lifestyles. So I got to explore the archive then. It was absolutely amazing to explore uh, the 80,000 pieces that they have on offer here. They have such a broad selection, um, ranging from everything from workwear to tailoring and outerwear. Um, so it's super exciting for someone like me, who's really inspired by vintage, to get to explore the collection. So the archive split into two sections. In the first half, you've got all the historical pieces, which include everything from workwear, uh, you've got military gear, there's vintage t-shirts, there's old skate gear. Um, and then in the second part of the archive, you've got all of the WP brands that they've been collecting since 1982. WP have been doing the licensing and distribution of Barber since 1984. Um, classic silhouettes like this Beaufort one here. Um, as you can see, classic kind of like Barber style. What I love about this style here as well is the way that they're kind of playing with the item in terms of upcycling and mixing kind of like artists and, and these different kind of treatments to give the item newness. So another one of the mainstays from the WP portfolio is um, Filson here. Um, they've been around since the late 1800s, sort of similar timeline to Levi's where they're producing these amazing kind of workwear goods that were built to last for all these kind of like rugged engineers and outdoorsmen. Um, so it's fully waterproof, has like really kind of like tight seal to it. Um, and yeah, I'd say this is one of their classic styles. 
So one of the really interesting pieces that I've pulled out from the archive is this Blundstone boot. Um, WP started working with them in, in the 90s, but they actually go back all the way to the late 1800s, and it's a boot that's been worn by soldiers, uh, workwear sort of people, uh, farm workers, through to like the swinging 60s and hippies are wearing them at festivals, and then you've got 90s grunge movement as well. A timeless product like this, like I feel that they really kind of live on through the people who have reimagined the kind of silhouette through the different generations. So during the, the 2000s, um, WP started exploring over into Japan and one of the labels that they picked up was Beams. Um, and as you can see here, they're sort of taking traditional silhouettes, but then they're adding like a Japanese flair to it by using these like super technical fabrics. So it looks like a kind of like classic item on the outside, but on the internal of it, you can see it's got this kind of like performance fabric. So another classic item and brand from the WP um, portfolio is Barracuda. And obviously the G9 is one of the most iconic silhouettes. Um, as you can see, it's this classic kind of Harrington style, has the signature plaid on the lining, iconic kind of Barracuda label on the inside there. Today, we're having brands remixing it through new collaborations as well. So I think the archives are really important for brands in terms of telling the history of the brand. It really kind of um, provides like a track record of the work they've done in the past and the garments that they've created. What I was really excited to hear is that for the 40th anniversary, the WP brand are actually going to be opening up the archive to the public and the industry people in the fashion world. Um, so they're going to be able to make appointments and come in here and explore the amazing garments and products on offer. The WP store are actually going to be starting to stock some of the vintage garments that they've pulled from the archive here. Um, so it's going to be really exciting to go and see um, what they've got in the store and how they're kind of mixing that in with vintage. I think with young consumers at the moment, they really want to buy into brands that have this strong legacy, um, products that are built to last, um, that have high quality and they have a timeless appeal. One thing I love about WP and the idea that it's constantly work in progress and that they're always on the search for like new products, new brands, new ideas. Um, so that's something I really sort of see in the future for the brand. They're constantly striving to travel the world and pick out the new brands as they have been in the past 40 years. 